Hi everyone, welcome to a new video. Thanks for joining me today. I have a new pastel drawing for you today. So I made this um, Highland cow with pastel pencils on pastel mats. And I lost the first part, unfortunately. I lost the background um, because just after I uploaded that part on Patreon, my PC crashed and died. So I couldn't restart it anymore. Um, it's sent off to be repaired, hopefully, but I lost that first video. And after that, I was without a PC for one week or so. So that's why I haven't, up haven't uploaded as well, because I couldn't edit and upload videos. But I bought a new one. I bought a new PC so I could uh, stay on schedule with my Patreon tutorials and so I could make videos for you again. So I made the rest of the parts of this video and yeah, so the rest of the parts are safe, but the first one I lost, unfortunately. But you can still watch it on Patreon, it's still on there. Luckily, it was just finished uploading before my PC died, so um, yeah, I had a bit of luck with that. So huge thanks to my Patreons because of you guys. I'm able to do this, buy new stuff, buy a new PC if necessary, and when something goes wrong. So thank you so much for your support and I hope you like this video. I will walk you through it and through the materials I'm using and I hope you'll enjoy watching. So I got the reference from Pixabay and on the reference it has two cows on it but I decided to do only the front one and to make up the background myself a bit. So the background is different when it comes to the coloring. I made it more green and a bit less detailed. There's almost no detail in the background. I did a bit of the bulky effect but um, it was done pretty fast. The size is 9 by 12 inches, by the way, and the pencils I'm using are Stabilo Carbothellos and a few Faber-Castell pits. So I don't use the Faber-Castell pit pencils a lot, but there are a few colors that I really like combining with the Stabilos, and th th those are 132, which I used for this one, 132 from Faber-Castell, 175, which is dark gray, and what was the other one? 174, if I'm right. Yeah, that's a dark green. But if you're a patron, you can find the color list, material list over on there as well to download. So um, yeah, I started off with the left half. I'm working from left to right, so I started off with the left horn and the left ear. The horns are very nice. I really like drawing those. I used quite a lot of different colors so that it doesn't get boring. Um, I used a combination of dark gray from Faber-Castell and then a few cool grays from Stabilo. A little bit of orange and a bit of yellow as well. Um, and it's very important that there is enough contrast in the horn. So the bottom line had to be very dark and then the top line where the light is hitting the horn it had to be very light to get that, um, that 3D effect in there and then I moved on to the ear the fur is very nice and vibrant brown a bit of orange in it as well and a bit of red I also used quite some purple and pink um, to get a nice balance in the fur so if there's too much yellow in it it will look unnatural if there's too much pink in it it will also look unnatural so the combination of the pinks and the yellows together creates a nice balanced brown fur so the most difficult part about this drawing was definitely his head his hair do, um, as I'm going to call it. That was the most difficult part because there's so much hair 
there in so many layers as well. So I really had to build it up, um, starting off with some base layers, mapping out the direction of the, all these long hairs, and then slowly creating the contrast in there. And also I needed to um, use a combination of those yellow tones and pink tones as well. And what was also very difficult is that the light hair from his forehead had to cover the darker hair from um, the nose and the rest of the face. So what I had to do first is um, finish the hair from the face and from the bridge of the nose. And after that, I could draw the light hair from his head, from the top of his head, um, crossing that fur. So at this stage, the hair from the head is not finished yet, far from finished, but I decided to do the rest of the face first and then complete the top of the head. Also the direction of the fur on the forehead and on the nose was quite difficult. The hair is very long, so um, it actually starts in between the eyes and then the fur is growing towards the nose and going horizontally towards the sides of the face. So I really had to look closely at that. I never draw drawn this animal before, so um, yeah, that was a bit And for the fur on the face, on the bridge of the nose, I used a combination of dark purple. That's the color 640 and then some pink, some light pinks and also some brown and some um, yellow or some orange. When I draw with pastel pencils, I always start off with a darker base layer on the fur. So here I used browns as a base layer, but not too thick. So the browns I used were 625 and 635. And 635 is the darkest one of the two. I mainly used 625 on the face, um, a light layer of that. Then on top of that, I could start glazing the other colors. So that's quite important to glaze as many different colors in there as possible. Um, don't blend too much. I try to not blend too much on the small areas because that's going to fade away all the details you just put in. So uh, not too much blending, but more like glazing. Like blending the colors and mixing the colors together with the pencils themselves. Then for the nose, I started off with a light pink, that's 681 from Stabilo, and I used that as a base layer on the whole nose. And then I glazed some purple on top of that, some magenta, and some brown, and I added some details in it as well. The nose was really fun to draw. And then it was time to move on to the eyes. So usually I start off with the eyes when I do an animal portrait, but in this drawing, the eyes are so small and they are covered by hair. So I decided to leave them for less. They are pretty tricky as well, very small. So I wanted to do the rest of the face first and then put in the eyes. So I also used brown for a base layer on the eyes. I had to use my imagination a little bit because they are very hard to see. I wanted to make them a bit more expressive than they are on the reference to give them a bit more character and I hope I succeeded in that but I'm not sure actually. But I spent quite some time on the eyes.
and then I could also finish the long hairs from the top of the head, crossing the eyes, adding some more detail to those hairs, and that's when the drawing started to come together. So these type of drawings really need to be built up in faces and in layers, and you definitely have to go through some ugly stages before it starts to look like something. So that was definitely the case with this drawing as well. Um, but after the eyes were done and I was happy with them, um, the drawing started to really come together. I did make quite some adjustments to the eyes because I didn't really like how they lined up. One was a little bit larger than the other. And eventually when I was happy with the eyes, I moved on to the bright side of the face starting off with the horn again and then the ear. So also for the horn I used a combination of many different colors. So I don't like to start off with a base tone of one color when I do a pastel drawing on a certain area. I like to start off with as many different colors as possible um, and already put in some contrast before I do any blending. So then I have a nice base to do my detailing on. I used a tad of blue on the horn as well, and a bit of pink, and a bit of very bright beige. And then I could also finish the ear and some of the longer hairs crossing the horn and overlapping the, the horn. So the ear I'm doing in the same way as the rest of the fur, starting out with mapping out the direction of the hairs. The hairs are very long. So in the first layers, I'm not focusing on creating the individual hairs because it's going to look like spaghetti. So I'm more focusing on the contrast in there, the right colors and the shadows in between the clumps of fur and the few individual hairs I leave for the very last. But you should be able to create a really nice realistic portrait without having to draw any individual hairs. Some more adjustments to the eye because I didn't like it. And after that, it was time to move on to the body. The body was the more easier part of this drawing. The most tricky areas are definitely in the face. So um, I was a bit more relaxed while working on the body. For the body, I also used the same browns for base layers. So that's 635 and 625, mainly 625, which is the lighter one and a bit more reddish. And the base look basically started mapping out all the different shapes that I see. So the bit of skin that's popping forward underneath the chin, and then the dark shadow next to that, the shadow behind the elbow as well, and the shadow behind the belly. So this cow is pretty fat, and the body covers quite a large part of the drawing. So it's very important that there is enough detail and enough value in there. Especially the value is super important because when you just color it in with a few different colors and not sp spend any time on adding some detail in there, it will really take away from the whole quality of the drawing. So after covering the body with browns, I also glazed some purple on top of it. So that's the 640, which is quite similar to Caput Morton Violet from the Polychromos line. So I really like that one. That really gives it a nice purple, deep glow. And for the darker shadows, especially on the shoulder, and the shadow behind the elbow, 
I used 175 from Faber-Castell and I tried to not add too much black to this drawing because that could make it look a bit flat so for the very dark shadows I'd rather went raw for the dark grey instead of brown and I saved the black for the very last. And I also already pulled out a bit of the highlight on the top of the back and the belly by adding some brighter orange and some pink as well. So you can see that the back is very nicely lit on the reference photo and I really wanted to uh, add that to the drawing as well to create that nice ambience in it. After the first layers, I could start with adding the fur texture a little bit. So what I do first is add the dark shadows in between all the clumps of fur. So as I said before, I don't focus on individual hairs just yet. I focus on the shadows in between the clumps of fur. And because this fur is very long, you could see all those clumps pretty well. And I did those shadows with the dark grey from Faber-Castell and the dark brown from Sabino, the 635. And that already gives a very nice fur texture, so you don't need to do a lot um, to create that fur texture in there. You have to make sure that there is enough shadow and then pop the highlights on top. Also, the back of the body um, is a bit out of focus on the reference, so I wanted to recreate that. Um, I want the attention of the viewer to go mainly towards the face, the nose, and the horns. And I want the body to complement that, but I don't want it to be distracting. Alright, so then I could start adding some highlights to the body adding some more of the very light tones to the back and actually after stop after stopping uh, the filming I added some more highlights to the back because at this point I felt like it was not light enough yet and with some pink um, the pink from Faber-Castell that's 132 I could pull out some of the individual hairs and highlight the clumps of fur on the rest of the body. So here as well I wanted to create a nice combination of pink tones and yellow tones. Also the cow needed some whiskers so I added some whiskers with beige that's 105 not with white because that would have uh, stand out too much would have stood out too much English is very hard. And after the whiskers, I added some final details on the horns, highlight them, highlighted them a little bit more. And I also added some fireflies to the background because I really like that look of those bright fireflies. They really give a nice touch to the drawings, I feel. It makes them look almost a bit digital. I really like that look, so when I can, I add fireflies to my drawings. Added some final hairs as well on the face, some of those light hairs falling over the face. And after adding the fireflies, the drawing was finished. So it took about um, five and a half hours, I feel, in total, or six. So it's a pretty quick project for me. Because I usually, when I work with color pencil, I use to spend about 15 hours on my drawings, on my tutorials. So this one was pretty quick. If you're interested in following this tutorial, you can go to the $7 membership on my Patreon. So it's for the $7 membership. You also get access to all the other tutorials on there, both for the $4 membership and the $7 membership. I am starting a new tier though. 
I've been doing this for two months now, the $10 tier, which adds another tutorial to the monthly tutorials. So I've been doing that as well. So when you become a member for $10, you get access to all the tutorials. So the $4 one, the $7 one, which is a longer project, and then the $10 one, which could be an animal, but I will focus that on other subjects as well. So I'll be doing a cherry this month, and I did a mop as well, and I did a flower, so that's pretty fun if you want to expand your subject. But that concludes this video for today. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And then I want to thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys!